I'm Rob Curtis from Cymat Wheels. We thought we'd take a moment and talk about uh, one of the hubs that we as custom wheel builders get asked about quite often. Uh, it's a hub that we build with a lot, a hub that we like to go to a lot, and that's uh, Chris King as a manufacturer. Uh, we had a customer come in who, for general bike maintenance, and had us decide to have us look over his wheels. We built these wheels for him uh, about six years ago. We haven't done anything to them. Uh, the bearings are in great shape. The internals are in good shape. Uh, this Chris King setup. But they do, in their literature, recommend that you, you do a thorough cleaning about every two to five years. Um, these being six years old, the customer says we've got about 15,000 to 20,000 miles of actual wear and tear on them. Uh, but we thought we would come in pull the hub apart and kind of show you the difference between what makes a Chris King a Chris King hub as opposed to other hubs that we work with which are typically three Paul uh, drive mechanisms in nature. Uh, so we want to pull it apart. We might skip around a bit. Uh, we'll show what the internals look like and show how you, you clean them and kind of look at it and, and kind of try to explain what makes them what they are. So the first things first, there's an adjuster collar on this outside of the hub. We're gonna take that off just so we can pull the axle off. Um, if it's tight, well, I've already loosened this one up a little bit, so it should just unthread and come off. There's an end cap in here. It's only held in by an O-ring, so we just pull that out, pop them off, and then we can push the axle out usually. So there's your axle, nothing spectacular, bearing on the outside there. And then you have our drive ring, which will start to pull out. And that's what it looks like. So not exactly like what you'd be used to seeing if you're used to working on uh, other hubs. Inside is where we actually have the drivers themselves and the ratcheting mechanism to allow it to engage and disengage in free hub over itself. Next steps, we're going to pull out the bearings. Both of these bearings service them. They're proprietary bearings, same with all parts in a uh, Chris King hub. All these parts are proprietary. Um, so you need the right tools to service them. Uh, don't go to your regular shop to service them if they aren't a Chris King dealer. You do need tools from Chris King to properly remove and service all of these parts. Um, as Chris King dealers and, and wheel builders in general, we have those parts and a lot of higher end shops should have them as well too. But just inquire and check. Uh, just because somebody says they can do it and they do it with a hammer and a screwdriver doesn't mean they can do it. Okay, so here we have uh, in my hand right now is, is and actually a hub from White Industries and it's a traditional or three Paul uh, mechanism. So these are called Pauls right here. Uh, they're spring loaded and what they do is they spring out to catch the lips of this drive gear on, that is usually embedded into the hub or screwed into the hub um, and by catching against them let me slide this together here by catching against them they're actually going to spring out catch the paw and drive the hub uh, if I push them together So those pawls spring out, they catch the gear, and they drive it forward. The way then that you have your engagement is in essence the number of engagement points um, divided by three. So for that number of degrees, that's how quickly or how much we have to turn in order to get the actual engagement itself uh, on the, uh, uh, with the driver. Now, what's different than in a Chris King setup, and here we have three focus points. They're steel drivers on a steel ring. Here we have uh, the actual driver itself here. So these are actually gears. They slide against each other on their face when they are uh, freewheeling. And then they lock together and drive the hub shell when they're actually driving. And the way that looks is 
these splines here interface with the actual hub shell. You can see it in here. And they're actually what drive the hub shell itself. So when this piece is turning, the hub shell is turning. They're spring loaded. And then the driver itself has a little bevel gear there that kind of kicks the back ring off of the front ring to allow it to freewheel. So in other words, this is how it looks when it's driving. Everything is all locked up into one piece. We're driving the bike forward. The cassette is on here. The cogs are on here. The chain is on there and it's driving the whole wheel. The second that we decide to free hub or free wheel, that's when you're going to stop pedaling. So the driver stops, but the wheel continues forward. Well, when that happens, as you can see, it starts this ring that's the hub starts to slide over the actual other set of gears. It's a little easier to show the effect if I just turn this free hub backwards. And yet the second I go to go forward again, the longest, the most that I'm going to have to turn is you see that gap in there between the two teeth. I simply have to fill that up with the gear again by turning it forward. So it's got very quick engagement. There's very little wasted room in forward motion before actually driving the hub shell forward. That's what made it a very popular um, design. With people who do off-road riding who don't want the pedals to, you know, skip half the turn before they actually start driving the wheel forward. They want instant engagement in their drive mechanism. So that's kind of what makes uh, a Chris King different. A lot of people argue the benefits and or shortcomings of this setup. One of the obvious shortcomings is that you really do need to know what you're doing when you're pulling it apart. You need the right tools so you don't damage any parts and you need to service it correctly. Now the flip side of it is that service wise you don't need to do regular service intervals on these hubs uh, to really keep them running in tip top shape. So, like I said, this setup's been running six years. It's got uh, anywhere from 15 to 20,000 miles on it. It may have been serviced by somebody else at some point in the past, uh, but honestly looks almost brand new, like the day it was uh, made. So, definitely one of the high points of running with the Chris King setup. All right, so another interesting thing about uh, Chris King is the bearings are all proprietary and manufactured in-house by Chris King. So they have very tight tolerances um, and they have certain features built into them that uh, differentiate it greatly from standard cartridge bearings. So one being the inboard seal here um, is has less drag in it, whereas the outboard seal, once you remove this lock ring, this rubber gasket here wears in a lot quicker than a standard cartridge bearing seal. Um, and because of how they're designed, it makes it completely serviceable as well. So you pick out this rubber gasket, which is easier said than done when you are like me. There we go. So there's the innards. Easy to service by spraying it out with WD-40, running it through, spray it a few times, run it out, tap it out, and then relube it with some uh, Mobile One synthetic, and then you can put it back together. Um, and yeah, you put it back together, put it back in, and it's as good as new. So when it all gets done, you get to hang around in the shop and listen to all the sweet dulcet tones of a Christine Hub. We like to do our final bearing adjustment with it in the frame, with the cassette on, torque, and the skewer in place so that we know we got the right adjustment. Thanks for watching.